Well, we wanted to have a little bit of a competition here today and yet have it involve some chemistry. So we're going to bet on our buffers. What this means is that the Flynn staff has all agreed to put up $5 a piece. Now let's consider that with a staff of about 200 people. Hmm, audience, you might be playing for as much as $1,000. Get your wagers ready. We're going to work with two different liquids or solutions. And the first one that we're going to work with is water. I have some DI water here, and I'm going to put into the beaker, you just want to have a consistent amount, so I'm going to put 25 milliliters of DI distilled water into this Petri dish, and then I'm going to use an acid base indicator. Now this is thymol blue. It's not an indicator that I use really for anything else. It's unusual. Thymol blue is going to be red in a very low pH, something below 2.5. I believe it's blue if you go above 8. But as we're going to see here, I'm going to adjust this so that the color is intermediate. The pH here is going to be between the 2.5 and the pH of 8. And we're going to have sort of a, a yellowish coloration. I want to make this pretty definite for us. So I'm going to add more of the thymol blue. That's pretty good. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make my second solution. And the second solution is going to have a buffer. Now this is an acetic acid, sodium acetate buffer. And it is 0.1 molar in, as far as the concentration goes with respect to the acid and the salt. All right, again, the same amount of liquid, 25 milliliters. You want enough just to cover the bottom of the Petri dish. You could also do this in a, a, a 50 milliliter beaker if you wanted to, give you some more depth. All right, there's our buffer. And I'm going to add the indicator, thymol blue again. The color's going to be just a little bit different. We're still going to have the yellow coloration, but it's going to be a little different because of this being a slightly different pH since it is buffered, and it's not just the distilled water. Pretty similar, though. You know, I've tried this with some other indicators, and the biggest difference is if you're using a universal, a bromthymol blue, something like that, what happens is that the colors are going to be different initially, and you want your colors to start out as similar as possible. Okay. Now, audience, this is where the wagers come in. What I'm going to do is take a solution that is 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid, and I'm going to add acid drop by drop to the Petri dish containing the water. I want you to write down somewhere, commit yourself to how many drops it's going to take to have this solution change colors, in other words, to go to a pH that's going to be below 2.5. 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid into water. How many drops? Here we go. Let's do a count here. Focusing on the Petri dish, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Now, that does have a different coloration, sort of an orange. So we're going to try to match this color, but use the buffer system now. The so acetic acid, sodium acetate. And the question will be, 
how many drops will I be adding to get to the same color in the buffered solution? If I put 25 drops in for the water, how many drops will this buffer system take to obtain the same coloration? Okay, here we go. Everyone, you should have written on a piece of paper how many drops you're going to predict. Ready? Okay. You're committed now. Let's go ahead and put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. No change. I'm going to need some more acid. I'm going to put in another set of 25. I don't think I'll have to count those out loud. That's 50 total. No change. Let's add another set of 25. I need more acid. Seventy-five total. Hmm, I think I'm going to add fifty drops as quickly as possible. I've added now a total of 125 drops, and I see no change in the color of the buffered solution. You know, how many of you predicted more than 125 drops? Everyone predicted less than 125 drops. I think that says something. 25 drops gives us this orange coloration in the water and yet, adding 125 drops, five times as much, still no apparent change in the color for the buffered solution. Another quick 50. Do you think you're going to be in the range then? Here we go. No change. Now a total of 175 drops. I'm just going to take a nice big squirt here. And I think you get the point, is that you can, you're going to have to add quite a bit of acid to the buffered solution. I'm adding about a milliliter at a time now, which is roughly about 30 some drops. That's probably about another 60 drops. We're up to two, roughly 225. This is going to be even more. This is probably going to give us close to about 300 drops. Even with roughly 300 drops of hydrochloric acid, 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid, I see little to no change, and that tells you something about the purpose of a buffer. A buffer is going to resist a change in pH. Now, I'm going to move over to the board for just a second. And we see here what a buffer is going to consist of. A buffer has to have two parts. The two parts are going to be a weak acid, it could be a weak base, but in this case we have a weak acid as part of our buffer, acetic acid, which I'm showing you here. 
And then there must always be a second part, the weak acid and it's conjugate. Boy, do my kids love that word. What's a conjugate? I don't know. It's a word. But what is a conjugate? It's not so important what the conjugate is, but where it comes from. Where would I get this acetate ion? Because it doesn't exist stably and independently. What I'm not showing you here is the spectator ion. This would come from sodium acetate, the salt of this weak acid. The sodium acetate salt would be very soluble in water, and when it would dissociate in water, it would form the acetate ions. Now, this sets up an equilibrium system, and what I was just showing you is this. The equilibrium allows movement back and forth to adjust as amounts of acid or base are being added to the buffer. When I add HCl, a strong acid, which ionizes completely, to form hydronium ions, we're going to talk about Le Chatelier's principle. Adding the hydrochloric acid, we're going to have too much acid. The acid's going to ionize, producing lots of hydronium ions. The stress on our equilibrium system is too many hydronium ions. This is going to cause our reaction to shift to favor the products, in this case, the weak acid. And so, in order to reduce the stress on the system, reduce the number of hydronium ions, we're going to shift in this direction. And we can do that because of the presence of the acetate ion being provided by the salt. We maintain a relatively constant pH as strong acids are being added. Now, at some point, you could, walking back over to the plate, at some point, if you were to continue to add acid, I'm just going to add quite a bit of acid here, but I'm acid adding milliliters and milliliters. With every squirt here, I'm adding probably about 50 or more drops. And you can see how effective this buffer is at resisting a change in pH. You can see some trailing color of the pink right where I'm adding the acid. But upon stirring, we're maintaining a relatively constant pH. Now, how long you can do this is going to depend on the buffering capacity. Increasing the number of moles, in other words, not having a 0.1 molar solution of the um, acetic acid and sodium acetate, increasing it to a one molar solution. That's going to extend uh, your buffering capacity. You can add more acid without having the pH change. And if you go beyond what the buffer can hold with um, add too much of the acid, it can only take so much stress, then you exceed the buffering capacity. Now you can do the same sort of reaction by adding sodium hydroxide. Uh, taking the plates, I'm just going to remove these two, and very quickly do the same experiment with 25 milliliters of water. and 25 milliliters of our buffer solution. And this time, after adjusting with some of the thymol blue, so that our colors are relatively the same. Again, a little bit of difference simply because I'm adding slightly different amounts of the indicator itself or the fact that the two solutions have slightly different pHs themselves. All right, but starting off with a yellow coloration and then we'll add sodium hydroxide. and the sodium hydroxide is 0.1 molar. I'm going to ask the participants again to write down their predictions for the water, how many drops of sodium hydroxide would be needed to have a color change. 
hopefully this time, let's see if they learn from the previous experiment. Okay, one drop, and I'm going to have to stir with the other hand. I think that's a pretty definite color change. Okay, one drop gives us a color change with the water. So now write down on your paper how many drops you think it's going to take for the sodium hydroxide to change the buffer system. Got your predictions written. Here we go. I'm using a slightly larger pipette now so that my drop size is, is larger. There's 20 drops, so I've added 20 times more base and still have the same starting color. Adding another 10, 30. And now I'm just going to put quite a few drops in. I'm going to add another 20 drops. If I'm off a couple of drops, I don't think it's going to matter because you can see there's still no change. It just goes to show you how effective buffers are at maintaining a relatively constant pH. And as much as I talk about buffers and what makes up a buffer and how buffers work in reactions, um, I think my students are still surprised when they see how much greater the buffers are at maintaining a relatively constant pH when small amounts I'm not even sure if I would say small amounts looking at these demonstrations of acids and bases are added.